We picked up this piano bench for $10 at our local Savers. Piano benches always do really well here. There's a lot of people that play and they're always looking for a cute one. I like the legs on it. It needs a little bit of sturdying up and a new upholster top. Needs a lot of love actually. Today for the very first time, we're gonna be using our milk paint that has no pigment along with our DIY pigment to make a fun new bright color to pair with our grain sack. This is what milk paint looks like with no pigment to it. It would be like a very opaque color if I used it just like this. So I'm gonna pour this in here. I don't need a ton for this project. Oops, that's probably more than I need. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some pigment. I have zero clue how bright this is gonna be, so I'm gonna add a little bit and then go from there. I'm using DIY's pigment powder in Van Gogh. It's like a really pretty, vibrant mustard color, and mustard looks really great on French style decor. So I'm going with that much. We'll see how that works. Once we've played with the pigments some more, we'll get you some formulas out. Okay, I'm just gonna slowly add warm water to this and mix it up and see what color we get. So I maybe used like one sixth of the pigment powder, one fifth, somewhere in there. There's a ton left in here. This pigment is so intense that a little bit goes a long way. So we're gonna start painting this. You could add extra bond to keep it from chipping, but I want it to chip, so I'm doing no bond. We'll see what happens. Streaky. I need to paint the top because it doesn't quite cover it. This is what the first coat looks like. We're gonna let that dry. Second coat, we should really start to see some good coverage. And I think we're gonna finish this off with dark oil wax, so it should really pair nicely if we get a little bit of chipping and some peekaboos through the paint. I'm just gonna try pulling up this old upholstery. Sometimes I get pliers out, but I think I can just rip this up. Okay, it looks like the batting and things is in good shape, so we'll leave that. We just wanna get rid of this old fabric. So second coat going on here. I think we might still have a few little touch-up areas, but we'll see. Because sometimes when I wet distress it, it doesn't really matter anyways. Yeah, and the dark oil wax is gonna hide a lot of that, and if we get good chipping, that's when the dark oil wax actually really shines. All right, so we had two coats on here. I set it outside in the sun to dry, Without extra bond on this shiny piano bench finish, we got a lot, a lot of chipping. We have a little bit extra paint. I'm half tempted to put it on there and see what we get. But also, sometimes this is just milk paint and you go with it and you leave your finish like this and it turns out looking awesome. So we've got that wobbly leg that I was showing you. What's happened is this is broken out on this part here and it's got a screw in there that someone else already put in, but it's gotten loose. I think if I just tighten this up and then I can screw this down more, that's gonna fix all those problems. I'm gonna be working on removing some of the loose chippy paint on here so that way we can oil wax it. I have my random orbital with 220 and we'll see what I got. We're using some extra grain sack fabric that we carry on our home website, jrvhome.com. It's a great European, French, Americana, I don't know. Uh, it's just a look that I love. It fits all the categories. It hits all the bells for me. I just wanna make sure that it's even on both sides, and it is. Stripes are a little bit difficult, but if you can get, if you can start off straight and even, then you, they'll stay straight and even. I've just got my handheld staple gun and 3 8 staples. We could get the pneumatic nailer out, but on a project like this, it almost takes as long to get the air compressor set up as it does to just use this. I like to start in the middle and work my way out. There's just enough fabric here to tidy up this underside. You're still gonna see staples, I'm not worried about that, but I'm going to staple it and make it look a little bit neater. So I'm gonna be using Sweet Pickens Oil Wax. It's going to seal this as well as get down into the cracks. 
a few spots where it got a little too sanded, it'll make them darker. Um, and it's just a really great product, dries hard. You need to pour it out because you're gonna brush it on. It does smell a little bit like lead pencils, but we're getting ready for back to school, so. Once this is dry completely, it does dry hard, like a, it has, a res, it has natural resins in it. So you can put transfers over it. You can also, if you've oil waxed something and it's dry, and let's say you wanna paint it later because you don't like it or you change your mind, you can paint over oil wax. If you're gonna do a transfer over the top, make sure that the oil wax has cured completely. You don't wanna do any lifting and then also make sure that you let it dry be enough before you buff it back so you're gonna brush it on wait about 20 minutes and then wipe it back I feel like it really lends itself to how much this chipped though yeah I feel like it does it, it does a great job of aging it without being like poopy <laughs> you know if what you, I'm talking about if you like chippy furniture this is for you. If you don't like chippy furniture, we went for a look on this. It chipped, we went with it, and the more it looks like someone drug this out of the back of a barn or a storage shed, the more we like it. Hey, there's an art form to old crusty barn situation. But also, did you see where it was light there for me sanding it? and how this darkened up that area. I really like that. All right, now that this has been sitting about 20 minutes, I'm going to wipe it back. And you'll see kind of the aged finish that we're left with. It may still chip a little bit over time, but most of the chipping is done. It's nice to see the two legs. You see this one still kind of shiny, hasn't absorbed the oil wax yet. This one, once you wipe it back, you can really see what the finish is gonna be. And this is nice too. I've buffed this to a really high sheen. And it sticks down in all the cracks, so it just makes all that chippy, yummy crackle stick out, but you also don't get the, the smeary situation that can happen from gross glazes or if you use like a dark wax and it looks like a dirty diaper smeared this is not that look <laughs> every time you talk about dark wax you have to bring that up because that's what it looks maybe it's because i've had five kids but sometimes i look at that and like nope too much so i've got this hinge i call it a piano hinge if you're looking to buy them they're called a continuous hinge but I cut mine in half because I couldn't find a long one. And longer ones are typically more money than I want to spend on a little bench project like this. So I'm just going to bring these in right about the middle there. And then, uh, so right, right about the middle here. And I cut it in half, that way I now have two hinges. So a hinge this size, it was about $7. So you just gotta hold it here for a sec while I get a couple of screws in and then you'll be good. All right, last thing this didn't have is a lid support hinge. This is for the right side. Quick little morning project. We saved this piano bench that was on its last leg. We made it look a little bit, you know, it went from a little bit old and crusty to a lot of bit old and crusty. So, you know, comment below, do you like this look? I know it's not for everybody, but for me, when you layer in pieces like this in your home, along with a little bit more like French country cottage, it just makes it cozy and old and worn. And I love to recreate that with milk paint. To get the paint products, you can go to jamierayvintage.com. For the grain sack fabric, hit up jrvhome.com. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.